Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to be talking about a company that recently announced earnings and we're going to figure out how this company is doing and if they present a good buying opportunity at the moment. And that stock is Costco. And we can see that over the last year, Costco is down around 4% in the same time period that the S&P 500 is down around 9%. So they are outperforming the market at the moment. And over the five year chart, they're up around 166% definitely beating out the S&P 500 that's only up around 50%. So Costco is a very good, well-performing stock over the long term, historically speaking. And so right here we can see in this article I found they're comparing Amazon to Costco in terms of a buying opportunity. They point out a few key points here. Amazon and Costco are seeing similar slowdowns in sales growth, mainly as a result of the economic headwinds happening in the economy right now. Also, Amazon invests heavily in a wide array of businesses whereas Costco is a little bit more reliable, but they don't offer the same potential growth prospects into the future. And so right here, we can see if I spread on here, they point out that Amazon is a much larger company. Their Amazon Web Services, their cloud service, is definitely a growing and very important part of their company. And so that's mainly how they operate their business model by just using the enormous amount of sales they have to reinvest into various business ventures and, tend, and then to grow their business that way. Whereas Costco, they basically stick to a warehouse membership club model. And initially it was made just to help customers in like a supermarket style chain, but now it offers full travel service, designer clothing, and even hearing aid clinics and a lot of other stuff to a lot of other benefits. We can also see right here that they point out to that Costco generally does well in a recession because they offer some of the lowest prices that you can find and their membership renewal rates have been steady at around 90% which is pretty consistent considering the current operating environment that businesses are competing in. On top of that we can see that due to the economic headwinds Amazon slashed around 18,000 jobs just like a bunch of other tech companies whereas Costco worked through the issues by building their own supply chain so that they could so that they could have lower costs and improve their business efficiency in these difficult inflationary operating environments. Also, if I scroll down here, we can see that they point out that Costco expands pretty slowly, so there isn't really that much potential for long-term change in their business model. Whereas with Amazon, they use their enormous sales from e-commerce to invest in various business ventures that eventually end up being essential growth drivers for their overall business. And right here, they point out a little chart here that shows Costco compared to Amazon in terms of operating margins. And we can see that during different economic environments, Amazon's operating margins increase and decrease substantially, whereas with Costco, Regardless of the operating environment, their margins tend to stay about the same, just very steadily increasing over time. And so this touches on the fact that, again, Amazon presents probably a lot more enticing growth prospects, whereas Costco is a much more reliable investment. And so lastly, that's basically what they point out right here. Costco is more of a slow burn with stability and dividends, whereas Amazon has tons of potential in new businesses and they offer high growth potential. So definitely different things that make each of these companies interesting in terms of an investment in a long term and a long term perspective, a long term buying opportunity. And so right here we can see for their financial statements this is their income statement. Costco basically is reporting their results for uh, the first the 12 weeks ending November 20th, 2022 to November 20th, 2021. And we can see during that time period, revenue has increased from around $50 billion to $54.4 billion. And so that's an increase of around 8% year over year. And we can also see that Costco's net income has increased from around $1.324 billion to $1.364 billion. And their earnings per share have increased from around $2.98 per share to $3.07 per share. So despite the inflationary pressures happening in the economy right now, Costco's earnings and their revenues are growing year over year. And so if I go to page five right here, we can see this is their balance sheet. They're basically comparing their balance sheet for August of 2022 to November of 2022. 
And during that time period, total assets have increased from around $64 billion to $66 billion. And we can see that the majority of their business is financed by liabilities compared to equity. They have around $44 billion worth of liabilities and $21 billion worth of total equity. And we can see in their retained earnings line item here, right here, it's increased from around $15.5 billion to $16.4 billion. So they are growing their business over time by retaining earnings, which allows them to then reinvest back into the business or distribute value back to shareholders. And so lastly, right here, we can see their cash flow statement on page seven for the 12 weeks ended November 2022 and November 2021. During that time period, net cash from operating activities decreased year over year from 3.2 billion dollars to 2.6 billion dollars we can also see in their cash flows from financing activities that they've repurchased around 141 million dollars worth of common stock in the quarter and then also they paid out around 400 million dollars worth of dividends in the quarter and both of these line items are up year over year from their results for november of 2021 so they are prioritizing returning value back to the share shareholders at the moment in the way of repurchasing common stock and paying out dividends and so right here, we can see a discounted cash flow model to figure out the intrinsic value per share for Costco to figure out if they're trading at a good buying opportunity relative to their intrinsic value. Right here, we can see Yahoo Finance is expecting them to grow at around 11% over the next five years. They have around $3.5 billion recorded as free cash flow for 2021, around a $2.6 billion net cash position on their balance sheet after subtracting their debt. And they have around 443 million shares outstanding, which puts their intrinsic value per share at around $133 per share, which means that compared to their current share price of over $500 per share, in terms of an intrinsic value perspective based on these projected growth rates and current cash flow and balance sheet metrics, it's basically saying that Costco is not trading at a good buying opportunity right now relative to their intrinsic value per share. Now, of course, that doesn't necessarily mean that Costco is a bad buy at the current share price because there are obviously other things that go into determining whether or not a stock is a good buy, like their potential future growth potential, as well as, well as like the stock price that they're trading at compared to some of their competitors in the industry. But that being said, at the moment, based on these metrics, if they do grow at around 5 to 11% per year over the next 10 years, then they're currently not trading below intrinsic value per share. And so right here on the right side here, we can see a quick little competitor analysis. I compared them to Target and Walmart, and we can see that in comparison, Costco has the lowest gross profit margin at around 12% compared to Target and Walmart's around 25 to 27%. They have the second lowest net profit margin at around 2.5%. That's above Walmart's 2.3%, but lower than Target's 6.5%. And then in terms of return on assets, they are also middling of the pack. Also middling of the pack PE ratio, Target has the lowest at around 20 times earnings and Walmart has the highest at around almost 45 times earnings. And they also are tied for the best at dividend with Target at around $3.38 per share. So from a competitor analysis perspective, it looks like Target probably would be the best investment because they have the highest profit margins and return on assets. They have the lowest PE ratio and they are tied for the highest dividend per share. So from a competitor analysis perspective, it doesn't look that good for Costco. It looks like you would probably want to invest in Target from this competitor analysis. And then from an intrinsic value standpoint, it looks like they're currently not trading below intrinsic value per share based on these projected growth rates at the moment. So interesting to see, obviously their stock price has been dominating. And as we saw from that article, they are pretty almost recession proof investment because it doesn't matter what operating environment they're in, their subscription based revenues tend to remain constant over the period. So definitely be interesting to see where this stock goes from here let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think of costco is it a good buying opportunity at the current share price let me know what you guys think leave a like on this video subscribe to the channel and i'll see everyone in the next one